Here in Kits, we can see the bedrock Vancouver is built on. These layers give us an idea of how an earthquake would be felt right here. But not all neighborhoods are created equal. So for the first time, a team of researchers has set out to study and map what we can expect from a quake across Metro Vancouver. We're performing an active seismic array. Uh, we hammer at one end and that sends seismic energy into the ground. And we use a line of geophones um, to measure the uh, speed at which that wave travels between the geophones. This paints a picture of what's happening below the ground, up to a depth of 30 meters. It's the current standard for building codes across the country. But Sherry Molnar and her team are going deeper with another method. The testing we're doing today, we hope to see to about 60 meters. And we do this testing at many sites, over 100 uh, sites in Metro Vancouver so far. By setting up a ring of seismometers a specific distance apart, they can measure the tiny vibrations that are ever present underfoot. These can be caused by natural phenomena like ocean waves, or they can come from humans through traffic or construction or jumping. Together with other data they've collected, that allows them to understand what's happening up to a kilometer beneath the surface. And that's bigger and beyond what the building code would normally require. The team now has tens of thousands of readings to create maps that show the hazards. And it's far more specific than what we've seen in the past. The maps themselves are fairly technical, but they're packed with valuable information. Take this one, which shows the amount of shaking over a certain threshold that different areas can expect to experience at ground level, given all the earthquakes we can expect in a certain time period, in this case, 475 years, measured on a relative scale, from reduced shaking to considerably more. Similar maps were created for different periods or speeds of seismic waves. That can tell you the shaking expected for buildings of certain heights. For instance, slower, long-period waves will affect taller buildings more strongly. This map, for instance, uses a period that gives you an idea of the shaking we can expect for 20-story buildings. Molnar's team also created maps for secondary threats, including liquefaction. And liquefaction is when the ground is shaken so hard and it's got usually sandy material and pour water in the pores between them. When you shake it really hard, that water gets percolated up towards surface and the mm. soil kind of acts like a, a liquid. Mm. Um, you would see, say, the front end of the building tilting forward. Um, you would see uh, also things that are buried under the ground, like pipes or manhole covers. So why do these effects vary so much across Metro Vancouver? As seismic waves travel through bedrock, away from the epicenter of a quake, they lose strength. But when they pass into more loosely packed sediment, they can reamplify, gaining some of that strength back and doing more damage. This effect is even more pronounced in wet, sandy, or muddy areas. So one neighborhood would experience the shaking differently from another neighborhood, based on whether or not um, the subsurface ground conditions have changed. There are three main categories. Bedrock, which is the base and forms the mountains, Ice Age sediments, well compacted from glaciers running over them, and modern sediments, which are softer and were deposited more recently. Each presents different risk factors. For instance, the sandstone bedrock is very close to the surface in kits, so quakes won't be amplified very much. But just a few kilometers south, the bedrock is buried under a layer of Ice Age sediment, and that can be riskier terrain. Meanwhile, areas by the Fraser River Delta, such as Richmond, are built on deep layers of looser modern sediment. That can mean more dangers of destruction when an earthquake occurs. These maps will be made available to the public, but it's important to understand what they're telling you and what they're not. These maps show the hazards for different areas, what we can expect to experience in a given time frame. They don't tell us the risk. To understand that, you have to layer on the human element, the infrastructure and preparedness. Take the West End, for instance, where these new maps suggest the shaking hazard is relatively low. But Molnar says the risk may actually be higher than some areas built on looser ground, because many of the older buildings weren't built to the seismic safety standards that modern developments are. Compare that to Richmond, where some types of hazard may be higher, but the buildings are new and up to code, lowering the risk. Hazard mapping is crucial to make decisions that affect everyone. And so emergency managers, our land use planners uh, need to anticipate and, and make decisions on disaster mitigation in their regions. Earthquakes are by far the most unpredictable kind of natural disaster. But here in BC, they're also inevitable. So knowing how and where to build resilient infrastructure is essential. 
And research like this is what makes that possible. Darius Madavi, CBC News, Vancouver.